The V Jump leaks show the new theme, New Generation Saiyans, featuring characters like Kid Goten and Trunks, Kale, Cauliflower, Kefler, and even Gotenks. But where's Kaba? I'll break it all down and also give you some new release date information. So, first of all, I just want to point out how this V Jump is kind of weird compared to usual. If you haven't noticed already, this V Jump is only one page and all the previous ones have had two. What's even more unusual is the actual theme itself. If we go back to the old V Jumps, you can see it's Rivals, Power vs Speed and Master vs Apprentice. Notice how these themes are linked because they're comparison themes. They're showing off two different types of characters. For Rivals, this is all the Goku forms vs Vegeta forms. For Power vs Speed, obviously it's all the power related characters like Super Trunks, Broly and Toppo versus the speed ones like Dispo, Kagsuna and Hit. And the same applies for Masters and Apprentices. But for new generation Saiyans, we can't really put these characters into two different types. So I was thinking, wouldn't it make more sense if we had two pages for this scan? And the theme was actually new generation Saiyans versus old generation Saiyans. Then they can show off old fan favourite characters like Raditz and even Bardock. I don't think they'll end up doing this for the trailer, but it'd be a cool idea. Personally, I wanted a true new generation Saiyan, like Super Saiyan Mr. Satan over here, and I'm sure everyone would have mained him from day one. Kaba isn't included in this V-Jump, as this is a new generation Saiyan theme, but it's focused on characters that use fusions, and obviously Kaba doesn't fuse with anyone. Moving on to the actual V-Jumps, the theme is obviously the new generation Saiyans. We've got base Kid Trunks and Super Saiyan forms who have high firepower and long range attacks. He's using his signature move Finish Buster but I don't think I've seen Kid Trunks use that so I guess they're trying to mix up new movesets. Then we've got Super Saiyan Goten who's better at short range close combat instead showing off his signature headbutt move against Kale. Now we've got the introduction of the Universe 6 Saiyans Kale and Cauliflower. Kale, who is known for her immense strength and defence, specialising in long range attacks. Cauliflower, a fierce leader with high special attack firepower. Then there's base Kale here and her legendary Super Saiyan controlled form where she's using her resist blast move. And there's base Cauliflower who transforms into Super Saiyan 2 and you have to look carefully here but this is Super Saiyan 2 and not Super Saiyan 1 as her bang at the front drops and her hair overall is more spiky. She's using a crush cannon move in both forms. The last sections are the really juicy bits. Super Saiyan Gotenks and Super Saiyan 2 Kefler are confirmed with signature moves like Super Ghost Kamikaze Attack and Gigantic Burst which is an enhanced version of Gigantic Blast and Limit Breaker Blaster. We've also got the returning mechanic Mid Battle Fusions. Here's how it worked in Tenkaichi 3. If you played a tag team match, you had the option to fuse mid game, either with the fusion dance or with Potara earrings. If you even varied your inputs, you can change which form your fusion becomes. For example, if you hold up and R3, you become Super Gotenks, but if you hold right and R3, you become Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks. This final section confirms the highly wanted 5v5 mode from Tenkaichi 3 2. I'm assuming it will be similar where you can pick 5 characters for each team and you battle it out until one team is fully wiped out. But what's more interesting is the actual screenshot itself. It kind of resembles a lobby from Fortnite where you've got the option here to select another character and your stage is dynamically shown in the background. But there's actually some HUD here with controller options. Square in the middle lets you proceed to battle. The controls at the bottom here let you select the stage with X, change your team with L1 and R1 and configure options. This implies that this isn't necessarily the character selection screen. It looks like this is the team formation screen you get after you select your team and stage first and it shows you this in case you want to change anything. Another detail is that all of these character images have had the world tournament stage in the background. This confirms it returning as a selectable stage and also suggests that we could get the return of the world tournament mode where if you hit the ground and leave the arena it counts as a ring out and you automatically lose. Here's the list of new characters and forms confirmed from this V jump. Base Kid Trunks Super Saiyan Kid Trunks Base Goten Super Saiyan Goten Base Kale Super Saiyan Controlled Kale Base Cauliflower 
Super Saiyan 2 Cauliflower, and the fusions Super Saiyan Gotenks and Super Saiyan 2 Kefla. There's a possibility for 4 more characters to be revealed in the trailer but it's not likely. There are base Gotenks, base Kefla, Super Saiyan 1 Cauliflower and Super Saiyan 1 Kefla. So far they've never revealed any new characters or forms in the trailer that weren't shown in the V jump so it's safe to assume that we'll be featuring those 10 characters from before in the trailer. There's also been some really big release information that's come out since my last video. First up, the official Dragon Ball website posted news confirming that we'll be getting new Sparking Zero information every month. PV here is an acronym used a lot in Japan which means promotional video aka we'll be getting a new trailer at the end of each month after the V-Jump scans. And that's why I'm predicting we'll be getting a new trailer by the 29th of May. May ends on the 31st, which is a Friday. But for past trailers, Bandai have typically announced them on earlier days of the week, like Mondays and Tuesdays. Secondly, there's been a so-called release date leak from IMDA, which is a group responsible for officially rating entertainment like video games in Singapore. On their website, if you search for Sparking Zero, you get a matching result stating all of their details. We've got the publisher Bandai Namco Asia, release year of 2024 and region of Asia. The decision is approved and the rating is general, which carries over from previous Dragon Ball games like The Breakers and general basically means the game is suitable for all ages. What's causing people to be cautious of this though is that only PS5 is written as a platform for the game, with no mentions of Steam or Xbox. However, what gives this leak credibility though is that this same rating board has previously leaked the release year for another game published by Bandai Namco as well called Unknown 9 Awakening. This game had a teaser on August 2020 with no release information until IMDA in 2023 added a listing for the game, confirming the release year to be 2024. Fast forward to March 2024, an announcement trailer is officially revealed, revealing a summer 2024 release. They've even got wishlist now on it. If you're worried about there being no Xbox or Steam mentioned on the Sparking Zero listing, then don't worry as apparently it's not unusual as IMDA have often disregarded platforms like PC and Xbox. In fact, this same thing happened to Unknown 9 Awakening which only had PlayStation before but now it has all of the platforms listed. Overall, what does this mean for Sparking Zero? If we assume IMDA is correct and the release year is 2024, then we can also assume that the game would come out by fall to winter. If we take the previous Tenkaichi release dates, the latest one Tenkaichi 1 released on October the 18th, if we give some leeway and say that Sparking Zero comes out mid-November, then how many more trailers are we gonna get? At the current rate, we receive about 10 to 12 new characters per trailer and we're assuming the total roster size is 164. Right now with the May trailer, we'll get 10 new slots giving us 71 characters out of 164. For June, if we've got 12 more, it'll be 83. For July, it'll be 95. August, 107. September, 119. October, 131. And November, 143. We'd still have 21 remaining characters not shown. Which leads me to another key assumption. Should we assume that all 164 characters are revealed before release or will they keep some hidden away from us? Personally, I think they'll end up showing all of the characters and then we'll eventually get more diverse trailers like story mode and new mechanics. So the only way they can reveal all of the characters in time is if they drastically increase the number of characters shown per trailer, which is where Summer Games Fest comes in. I feel like this is the more likely option with the 10 new slots from the May trailer giving us 71, around 30 new characters shown in Summer Games Fest June giving us 101, then from then onwards 15 to 20 new slots for every trailer. So July it will be 121, August 141, September 161 and then they might just include the final 3 characters in there too. Then they release showcase trailers with new features leading up to a final launch. 
That reminds me, we've also got official confirmation from Summer Games Fest that Bandai Namco is an official partner. We should now expect to hear Sparking Zero news there and hopefully it will be something as big as a release date or even a beta.